Hi, I'm Aritz Lobscher, and today we'll discuss the use of splints and traction in orthopedic surgery. Splints and traction are used for a variety of indications. These include firstly the temporary immobilization of injured limbs or joints. Secondly, the definitive management of certain injuries and fractures. And thirdly, postoperatively to limit use or rate of range of motion of a limb uh, to assist with the rehabilitation post-surgery. Some of the splints discussed in this tutorial is only for you to be aware of the terminology. It's not something that you will prescribe as a general practitioner and some of them is commonly prescribed by um, general practitioners for the treatment of musculoskeletal injuries or conditions. Remember the acronym RICE that we use in the treatment of soft tissue injuries and other minor injuries. Um, splints often assist with um, the rest as well as gentle compression um, to prevent further swelling of the injury. Starting at the spine, soft cervical collars are not frequently used by orthopedic surgeons. They are more commonly used in accident emergency units as symptomatic treatment of um, non-serious cervical injuries. Once serious cervical injuries have been ruled out clinically and with the use of x-rays and there's no fractures or dislocations, a soft cervical collar is sometimes prescribed for symptomatic injuries. It does not provide a high degree of um, immobilization of the cervical spine and is definitely not um, rigid enough to treat any fracture of the cervical spine. Hard cervical collars are frequently used to either temporarily immobilize the cervical spine before the cervical spine is cleared clinically or radiologically. Um, it's also used to temporarily immobilize um, certain injuries prior to surgery and then furthermore it is used as a definitive management in certain stable cervical fractures. A variety of uh, forms are available. If you look at uh, these ones sort of made of a hard plastic, um, they are more commonly seen uh, in accident and emergency units and on ambulances for the temporary immobilization of the cervical spine. They're not as comfortable and not normally uh, indicated for long-term use. This Philadelphia collar is a more comfortable form of a hard cervical collar. It provides the same degree of cervical immobilization as the other example but it's just more comfortable for long-term use. And this is what we use in our unit, either for the temporary mobilization of an injury prior to surgery or um, as definitive management in certain stable cervical injuries. A SOMI brace or a sterno-occipital mandibular immobilization device is a rigid cervical orthosis that provides a higher degree of immobilization than a hard cervical collar and is used for the treatment of certain cervical fractures. A TLSO or thoracolumbar spinal orthosis is a rigid spinal orthosis and that immobilizes the um, lumbar and thoracic spine up to the level of T8. Um, it is either available in a off-the-shelf version like the one in the picture here or can be custom molded to the patient. Um, in general, um, thoracic and lumbar spinal orthoses are used a lot less frequently than cervical um, collars, and this is due to the difficulty of fitting due to different patient body ha habitus. And in a patient with a high BMI, it is very difficult to effectively fit a brace and effectively immobilize the immobilize the spine. So a TLSO is used for the treatment of certain thoracolumbar lumbar fractures um, that does not warrant surgery or the expertise is not available and it is also occasionally used post-operatively 
um, to limit the range of motion in the thoracic and the lumbar spine. This is another form of a TLSO or thoracic lumbar spine orthopathosis called a Jewett extension brace. And again, this is used for the non operative management of certain thoracic lumbar fractures. LSO or lumbar spinal orthosis does not provide a high degree of immobilization of the lumbar spine and is not stable enough to treat any fractures in this region. It is sometimes used in the symptomatic treatment of mechanical back pain. As orthopedic surgeons, we don't prescribe these frequently as there's no real evidence-based benefit to the use of these braces uh, for mechanical back pain. Traction refers to the attachment of a weight to a limb or to the spine, and this can be either achieved with the use of skin traction or skeletal traction. Cervical traction is an important topic, but it's not part of today's tutorial. Cervical traction is used for the acute reduction of displaced fractures or dislocations in the cervical spine and for the definitive treatment of certain unstable cervical fractures. There will be a separate tutorial on this topic that is very important. Moving to the upper limb, the first splint to discuss is a sling or also called a broad arm sling or a triangular bandage. This is used for immobilization of injuries of the upper limb, specifically around the shoulder, um, where the elbow needs to be supported. As you could see here, typically this is used for the immobilization of a chromiotivicular joint injuries or um, the fractures to the clavicle or for the temporary immobilization of the shoulder following the reduction of a dislocated shoulder. A collar and cuff differs from the previous splint in the fact that the elbow is not supported and this allows the weight of the arm to reduce certain fractures like a proximal humerus fracture. It can be used in conjunction with a body bandage as you can see on the picture on the right here to further limit the range of motion of the shoulder. Um, in adults you can also ask the patient to wear the collar and cuff underneath the, their clothes to achieve the same goal as the body bandage. The shoulder immobilizer is a brace with multiple functionalities and can be used to limit the range of motion uh, around the shoulder. Um, a second strap can be applied around the body to, do, to um, provide a higher degree of immobilization. This is used for a variety of indications to treat a lot of injuries around the shoulder definitively, um, but also for the temporary immobilization of the shoulder or the upper limb following surgery to the upper limb. A humeral brace or a Sarmiento brace is a brace that's frequently used for the definitive management of fractures to the humeral shaft. Remember the dictum um, in orthopedics when you treat a fracture that you need to immobilize the joint above and the joint below the fracture. So for proximal humerus or neck of humerus fractures, we will use a shoulder immobilizer or a collar and cuff with a body bandage as I earlier described. For humeral shaft fractures, we typically temporarily immobilize these in a use lab and then either definitively treat them in one of these um, humeral braces or proceed to surgery if indicated. Now these humeral braces can either be an off-the-shelf um, version that is fitted on the patient's arm or they can be custom made like the one on the right for a thermoplastic uh, material. A rigid wrist splint is used as part of rice treatment for soft tissue injuries around the wrist. Importantly, it is not stable enough to treat fractures like a distal radius fracture. It's occasionally also used postoperatively to limit the range of motion of a wrist or to 
limit the range of motion of the wrist in the treatment of certain conditions like a carpal tunnel. It is made up of a stretchy fabric like neoprene um, and includes a rigid volar bar which can be made up of either hard plastic or metal. Upper limb traction is mostly historical in the developed world, but is sometimes still used in Africa and even in certain places in South Africa to definitively treat complex upper limb injury like distal humerus fractures. Most of these injuries nowadays are treated uh, in adults definitively by surgery. Moving down to the lower limb, a Robert Jones bandage is a term that is used for the sequential application of layer of soft band or fell band and an elastic bandage. It's originally described to mobilize the knee joint, but it can be applied um, across any joint. And once again, it provides a part of the rice treatment for soft tissue injuries where it immobilizes the joint. It provides gentle compression to um, limit swelling. Typically, it's used in the uh, trauma unit. If you see someone that injured or twisted the knee, the knee is painful and swollen, and x-ray reveals no fractures, and you suspect a ligament or other injury. You can temporarily immobilize the joint with a Robert Jones bandage and review the patient in 7 to 10 days once the swelling has settled and to re-examine the limb and to try and get to a diagnosis and possibly refer the patient. There are also commercial knee immobilizers available, like the one in the picture here on the right. These are made up of a foam type dressing and straps and is quick to apply and provide, provides the same degree of immobilization as a Robert Jones bandage. A knee extension brace or knee extension immobilizer is a more expensive brace and shouldn't be used to immobilize a knee after a simple injury. It is made up of uh, panels with hard metal or plastic bars to, to, to provide a high degree of immobilization of the knee. It is typically used in um, cases of non-operative treatment of posterior cruciate ligament injuries where you wish to splint the leg in extension and in certain cases post-operatively where you wish to splint the knee in extension. A hinge knee brace or adjustable range of motion brace is a knee brace that's used for a variety of indications. It's used for the non-operative treatment of certain injuries around the knee, specifically for a medial collateral Ligament injuries, even complete ruptures of the MCL, is treated in a hinge range of motion, brace with free range of motion, while still providing various and valgus protection. It is also used post-operatively to limit the range of motion to uh, of the knee to a certain um, arc, depending on the surgery that was performed and also of the fixation of certain fractures to still allow early range of motion of the joint while giving some various and bulbous protection. A long fracture boot, also known as a moon boot, is a brace that is used frequently for a variety of injuries of the ankle and foot. It is used for the treatment of stable fractures of the ankle and some fractures of, uh, of the feet. Um, it is also used post-operatively after surgical fixation of ankle fractures and other fractures to limit the range of motion and to provide a degree of protection. It is also used for the non-operative treatment of high degree ligament injuries around the ankle and certain conditions like Achilles tendon ruptures. It's an expensive um, orthotic, so should not unnecessarily be prescribed for minor ligament injuries around the ankle. An AFO or ankle foot orthosis is not a brace that is rigid enough to treat any injuries. It is used by many specialties 
for conditions where there's absence of active dorsiflexion. It's commonly used in children with spasticity like CP to prevent equinus contractures and to maintain the foot at 90 degrees or neutral to the, to the leg. It is also used in adult patients with urological conditions like stroke. It makes the gait more um, effective when you have a dropped foot by um, allowing easier swing through and stopping your toe catching when you have a drop foot in orthopedics. We use it for the definitive management or temporary management in cases where we will wait for recovery for a peroneal um, nerve injury that causes a drop foot. And as I said earlier, it's also used to improve the gait in certain neurological conditions like cerebral palsy. There are a variety of different ankle braces available for the treatment of minor ligament injuries around the ankle. It is also used for people participating in sport to allow them return to activity following an injury while still providing some um, extra support of protection of the ankle joint. Traction is frequently used in the lower limb, either for the temporary immobilization of fractures or occasionally for the definitive management of certain fractures. As I said before, traction simply means uh, a way to attach a weight to a limb. Um, skin traction, the weight is attached through um, either an adhesive uh, with or without a bandage, as you can see in the exam example of a skin traction set on the right here. Remember the dictum immobilize the joint above and the joint below. So for fractures around the hip, these include neck or femur fractures and pertropenteric fractures. We temporarily immobilize the fracture with the application of skin traction. The skin traction is applied over the end of the bed with the use of a swan neck. Please take a note uh, when you apply skin traction over the end of the bed and you do not have access to the weight, don't tie the limb down to the bed as this will simply pull the heel down onto the bed and limit the movement and causes a pressure sore under the calcaneus. You always need to have an upwards trajectory of your pull um, when you have skin traction, even when you put it over the end of the bed, then place it over the um, end of the bed to still have a net upwards pull. In certain indications, we need to attach more weight to a limb as can be tolerated by skin traction. These indications include central dislocations of the hip and certain acetabular and pelvic fractures. This is something that you probably won't do as a general practitioner, um, but only if you work in orthopedics. And here we insert a traction pin to the proximal tibia, the distal femur, or sometimes even the calcaneus that it allows uh, the attachment of more weights to the injured limb. The Thomas splint is used to temporarily immobilize femur shaft fractures. Historically, this was used as a definitive treatment of femur shaft fractures, even in adults. Nowadays, we only treat certain age groups of pediatric patients definitively in traction, and most adults um, is treated operatively for femur sh shaft fractures. However, there are still many places around the world, including in Africa, where adults are treated definitively for femur shaft fractures in traction. It's still important to temporarily immobilize the femur shaft fracture prior to surgery to limit blood loss, limit pulmonary complications, and also for the comfort of patients. There are commercial available traction splints available, like the one on the right here, that's called the Track 3 splint, that is equivalent to a, to a Thomas splint. Even when we treat femur fractures operatively as soon as possible, it's important to apply a Thomas splint as soon as possible. 
um, a femur fracture is a clinical diagnosis and patients should never be sent for an x-ray without immobilization of a suspected femur fracture as the patients enter the, the um, trauma unit or sometimes even on the roadside on the ambulance, a Thomas splint should be applied prior to, the, to obtaining radiology. And this is a study published from my unit where we compared the early visit delayed application of a Thomas splint and we showed that patients with the early application of a Thomas splint had less blood loss, fewer transfusions, fewer pulmonary complications and fewer days in ICU. So it's very important to always immobilize any suspected femur fracture as early as possible. When we treat a patient definitively for a femur shaft fracture with a Thomas splint, we need to use what's so-called balanced traction. A balanced traction simply, simply means balancing the traction with the use of this device, which is called a brawn frame. And you can see here that the rope and pulley system elevate the leg of the bed to allow the patient to move around more comfortably including using a bedpan. Just remember, when we treat adults definitively in traction, the femur fracture takes three to six months to heal. So they're in traction for a prolonged time. Luckily, children in certain age groups where we treat them definitively in traction, heal very quickly, and they're normally only in traction for six weeks. Gallows traction is used in small children for the definitive treatment of femur shaft fractures. The legs simply tied up with skin traction to a horizontal bar um, and the weight of the body um, reduced the femur shaft fracture. Because of the large remodeling potential of femur shaft fracture at this age group, uh, the position is not so important. The children femurs heal very quickly and they only need to be in traction like this for a period of two to three, two to three weeks. Bigger children can't be treated like this because of an increase in vascular complications. So the age cutoff is normally around 18 months or under 13 kilos. Patients can be treated on a mobile platform like this that allows the parents to take the child home for the duration of the treatment. Application of a Thomas splint is a very important clinical skill, both for passing the exams as well as for your career as a general practitioner, specifically if you intend to work in trauma units. These are two videos from our YouTube teaching channel that nicely show step-by-step -step, uh, application of a Thomas splint. This is a very useful resource that's available free by the AO Alliance. It's available on our fifth year Vula site, and there's also a, fr a f free link uh, from our UCT Orthopedics website. It is published by the AO Alliance and it contains details of how to treat most fractures non-operatively, specifically for those who work in rural area without good access to operative orthopedic care. This textbook can be invaluable. Thank you very much.